Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. It's Cheryl Lazar at NFTLA with Dirk Lute from Upland. Thanks for being here. And so what brings you to NFTLA? What's going on? Well, look, you know, I mean, this looks like a very large conference, right? Yep. And you just have to be here, I guess, right? So that's because, uh, uh, you know, it's a nice city, of course. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, you know, vibe here, good vibe, good people. And, yeah. you know, we don't, didn't want to miss out that one. No, we appreciate that. Yeah. So tell us more about Upland. So Upland is basically what we call the Earth's metaverse. That means it's based on the real world. Cool. And of course on blockchain technology. Uh -huh. And we're currently one of the largest, or even the largest uh, metaverse. So we have over 200,000 landowners, right? And um, so, and we have roughly, you know, two, two and a half million uh, registered users. So it's quite, quite a lot of people who own property now in cities like New York, Los Angeles, in, in San Francisco. So we're currently live in 20 cities. And um, yeah, people go there to play, earn and connect. So many questions. One, is real estate cheaper in Upland in LA than here? I tend to say yes, it's still, it's still it is, right? So I can so, afford a beautiful house there, maybe not here yeah. in real life right well, now. Yeah, maybe near the ocean, right? So uh, Yes, I want yeah. a Malibu home. I mean, I'm <laughs> waiting for my crypto money to get more liquid. That's all going to happen. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, so people are, you know, in Upland, people obviously, you know, because our vision is, you know, that people are actually go and create value in Upland and okay. eventually make money, not just by speculating, by you know, by adding really, you know, interesting stuff to yeah. it. Yeah. And we have people in Upland already. There was just one quote I saw in the community: someone who actually managed to earn so much money in Upland that he was able to pay the down payment of his real-world house for it. Right. Which Love is, that. That's very good. Yeah. Wait, so what is he doing? How is he making all that money? So um, first of all, yeah. First of all, you can purchase properties which are based on the actual parcels. Right, okay. of a property in the real world. You can buy it and maybe you can sell it. So this you, you become some kind of, a, let's say, a realtor and you're selling that. Or the other things which you can do is we have what we call meta ventures. People can run and operate shops in Upland and sell NFTs to other, to other players, right? So I'll give you one example with little game pieces which are called Block Explorer and they can go and sell those to other players. Or we have a partnership with the NFL Play Association and you can run and operate a fan shop, right? And selling NFTs from the NFLPA in, in your own shop in Upland. I, I, this is crazy, and I mean, I'm in the space, but I'm still blown away by this type of stuff. Are you working with cities or governments, or people could just take over whatever place they want? No, not yet. I mean, first of all, I mean, we're launching very carefully with yeah. the supply and demand. I mean, in theory, we could have launched the whole world, but we really want to, go, you know, grow slowly. Yeah. And also, it's because otherwise, if you open up everything, you know, then the economy, you know, suffers from that. Or the right? yeah, the 1% can come in and just buy everything, right? Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. And that's just not interesting, right? But now it's, you know, when we open up, for instance, we opened up LA in, um, in January, right? And on that day, we had 300 transactions per second because there was so much demand. You know, people are trying to purchase property or purchase virtual land in, in, uh, on that day, right? And lots of, and of course, it's some kind of competition, right? You find something in North LA, South LA, you want to have as a property, but maybe there are 10 others who want the same property. So it's, it's, it's fun. So again, are you going to look towards working with like actual uh, officials in those cities or states or countries on? The upland land? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, we are, let's say, we are an additional digital layer on top of the real world, right? Yeah. So, um, but I, to, so far we have not yet worked with any yeah. official government, but I clearly see that coming I don't even know if you want to, up. to be honest. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, it could be interesting. We have some advanced uh, governments, right, where, you know, people are really embraced the whole idea of NFTs and crypto, and that could be a nice, interesting opportunity. Is, is there still land available in some of these places that you've opened up? 
Uh, yeah, so there's still land available in LA, and we've also opened up Nashville, but San Francisco or New York, Manhattan, you know, that's all sale, sold out, right? Staten Island and Brooklyn. That's amazing. That everyone, put, it's, it's really, so we sold over or roughly two and a half million NFTs so far, right? Because you're selling NFTs through there. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so every property which is based on the real world, yeah. parcels, this is always, a, this is an NFT. Got it, right? mm -hmm. okay. This is uh, fascinating. So what's ahead? What does the future hold? What are you gonna be doing? Anything to announce here? Yeah, so what we particularly are super excited about is also that we are going to launch cars in Upland. So right now, when you want to go from San Francisco to New York, you have to take a, actually a plane, right? And the plane, you cannot just go from, you know, take your mouse or whatever, click one left to right. No, you have to really take a plane, which takes, you know, it depends on, you know, which, which you know, class you're flying, 20, yeah. 30 minutes, right? So, so, and with cars, we're introducing actually movement. So when you're in San Francisco, you want to go maybe to Lake Tao, you need a car to go there, right? But eventually, you're also going to um, launch car racing and the idea about car racing is that you can fire up your own racetrack let's say in San Francisco and race through the streets of San Francisco right and then in a, a little bit more further in the future maybe have a cannibal race from San Francisco to New York right which goes over multiple days and people will do live reports around it but what is much more interesting is that we're creating a full economy around cars mm. so players will be able to operate let's say manufacturing plants and then they will be able to sell their cars, which are NFTs, to car dealers or let's say showrooms. Those showrooms, again, then they will sell it to customers or users yeah. right, who want to own that car. And there's a lot of new opportunities eventually for users to earn money in Upland beyond speculation. So how are you trying to differentiate from others out there, whether it be like modal, mobile metaverses or like the sandboxes and Decentraland? So first of all, we are based on the real world, yeah. right? Which is a clear differentiator, yeah. right? So that's one thing. And then actually we are, we are, the, only, um, uh, we are the only one who's actually available on iOS and Android. Okay. Right? So, so that's, um, and you know, which gives us also, you know, an easy way in for, let's say, non-crypto aficionados. So we have 65% of our users, they don't own NFTs outside of Upland, right? So we are able to onboard lots of users because it's super easy, just an email and password to sign in, mm -hmm. right? To really get into the world of NFTs. Right, and then and then you get uh, get started, and what we also super excited about soon we're going to introduce what is called the portal. People yeah. will be able to import NFTs into Upland from other cool. blockchains. Right now we have one project on Wax, but in the future you can import NFTs from Solana, from Ethereum. Maybe let's say you want to run or operate a digital art gallery, and then you can import digital art from other blockchains and put them into your virtual home or virtual house, and there you have then the art gallery and sell. Uh, first of all, show it, and then maybe sell it with no gas fees and so on. It's going to be super interesting. That is amazing. What about the rollout of other cities? Yeah, so we so we can be rolling out other cities uh, right now in the U.S. Uh, we're focusing a little bit on the NFL cities because obviously we have the uh, a partnership with the Player Association, right? Um, but uh, also we plan on going international this year. I'm like, I just find the metaverses like this just really interesting, including. It's just this idea of like the future of real estate as well. Oh yeah. Right. Um, so what I was going to ask, where do you see this space in a year from now? Like, where will we be? What are your predictions? Well, I think we'll always go up and down, right? Yeah. We all know that currently there's a short dip, you know, you know, now we're in March, you know, 2022, 20, yeah. right? But I'm, I'm sure because I've, I've been in the space for so long. Actually, when we founded Upland in 2018, we called it upland.me, um, like, like, you know, like the, met, stands for metaverse, like the URL. And at that time, no one was talking about the metaverse, mm -hmm. right? It was interesting. But since then, we've really going, seen all those waves, ups and downs. So we'll go, uh, hopefully again up and I think that we will see you know more let's say uh, normies you know average people coming on board and doing doing lots of things <laughs> you are just saying hi <laughs> that's what it is we're in the middle of it what advice do you have for those getting into this space I think, uh, well, like everyone says, right, do your research. Just don't buy blindly or just mm -hmm. make sure because there's a lot, unfortunately, a lot of fake stuff out there, right? Just be sure that you know who you're buying from, right? And maybe, you know, watch a lot of YouTube videos, understand the market and just, you know, start arbitrary, you know, and just hoping, you know, you're doing a great deal. And don't think, you know, you become rich quickly, right? It's just not happening. It's, it's a slow process. Definitely. Yeah? Amazing. 
Well, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And hopefully, maybe I'll buy some lands now, not blends. Do it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs>
So we're here because we are blockchain enabling the metaverse. So Amazing. we have our own metaverse, MView, Million Daily Active Users. We're launching tokens, NFTs, and working on interoperability. Okay, I've been talking to a bunch of different metaverses okay. today, and I, I love it because it's here. But what makes yours stand out? Yeah, so we're part of the Together Labs family, which was just named today one of Time's most influential 100 companies. Amazing. And we have a Metaverse MVU. It's established, it's 16 years old, we have 200,000 creators, a million daily active users, so it's a very vibrant uh, user base and economy. Mm -hmm. And so unlike maybe some that are just starting out, we've been in this space for a long time, pioneering it, and now we're blockchain enabling the economy for our users so they can earn, they can own, own, they can control those earnings and then eventually be able to take the what they control off the platform as well. So do you feel like really in the past it was more known, it was a metaverse, but it was more for gamers and now different types of audiences are coming in? It was really a social platform. Okay. In our platform, um, unlike maybe a game single purchase mm -hmm. economy where you go and shoot them up or buy a sword or whatever it might be, people in our platform come to make friendships. They come to connect, they come to chat, they go dancing at nightclubs on Friday, they meet up with their friends, they get married, have babies, so it's a very social connected platform. And so what we're trying to do for them is we're trying to allow them to take, you know, they buy eight to $10 million of virtual goods a month. We want to move those over to NFTs so they can have full control and the ability to resell and the ability to enjoy their uh, creativity along that purchase path. And it, then also with digital currencies, we now have an opportunity for them to earn real money on the platform and convert that to fiat, which is a big, big proposition for our users. Yeah, that's... Great, I was going to ask you, yeah, how have you been transitioning from the Web 2 world to the Web 3 world with uh, the same brand, which I find really interesting? Yeah, it, it was um, important to us to be the ones to bring this to our users. They trust our brand mm -hmm. quite a bit. We've been in this space with them. We've been part of their community for a long time. And so it was important to, for them to know that it was coming from us. Uh, you know, we have some crypto users on our platform, but not everybody has MetaMask wallet where they're ready to connect up, you know, to different worlds. And so we're educating them, we're using our influencers on the platform to help educate them, and we're really bringing them tangible benefits. We don't always use words like DAO and crypto and wallet, but we use things like earn cash, you know, convert to money, you know, be able to have a service. So it's very um, uh, translated to them in the language that they want and yeah. in the space that they need it. That's so needed to make it more accessible. Yes. Right? So I just find that uh, fascinating. Do you feel like people are getting it and what is needed to onboard or to translate that more? Yeah, in our community, it takes the community. So we've really been working with our creators who produce the virtual goods, and then we have a service side economy where people provide services. So they host a nightclub, they're a DJ in a nightclub, they um, you know, are personal shoppers so that new people on the platform don't look like newbie avatars. And so these people, we've really been educating that they can now really make money off of what they provide to the community, and the community listens to the other parts of the community mm -hmm. and so we've really been looking at our core group and they've been educating with us as well. So interesting. Where do you see this a year from now even? Even though you've been in this space for years. <laughs> I think a couple of things will happen. I believe that the user experiences will get better. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is sorely needed. Because if we want to bring more people into the space, they have to have a seamless or a frictionless experience. Yeah. So that's going to be key. I think NFTs will really take off. And you know, I think eventually, you know, maybe we're not calling them NFTs. Maybe they're collectibles. Maybe there's something that people can really, trans or, you know, can really identify with. I saw the DC collection here, too. I think mm -hmm. it's a great example of people understanding understand trading cards, and now there's a hybrid. To me, those are great examples of how we can move this forward with the mass market. And then we're really big on interoperability. We believe that there will be lots of places people want to go in the virtual world, not just one metaverse. And so we're working hard to make sure that our users can easily come into our platform or leave our platform with what they own and control mm -hmm. and be able to seamlessly you know, move about, just like we do in the real life today. Really cool stuff. Thank you. Yeah, and so what about new people coming in? What advice do you have that are saying all this stuff, you know, NFTs, crypto, DeFi, metaverse, it's very overwhelming. 
It is overwhelming. And the rate of information and the rate of change in this space is so high. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one thing I would tell people is the thing that I did when I first started this community, reach out to people. Yeah. This community is so open. I mean, that's the foundation of blockchain is, you know, having this, you know, community of users. And so unlike some other industries I've been in in the past, it's very open to helping and to mm -hmm. sharing. And so when we first started, we were out talking to everyone, pressure testing our strategy, understanding what the market was like. So I would recommend if you have an idea in this space, reach out. People will talk to you. And I think it's a very open and friendly space. So take advantage of that. And don't just talk to people in the metaverse. You can. You could also just like on other social networks. Exactly. Hit them up. It, you know, hit them up. Ask yeah. them questions. Give them your pitch. See what they think. So I think if people, you know, really dive in and start connecting with people, they'll find that they're very welcomed. And what's coming up for you all? Anything new? Yeah, you're so be um, we at MetaJuice, we're the blockchain arm of Together Labs. We have one token in the market. Uh, it's VCoin. It was the um, first ever no action letter approved token uh, to be launched in a metaverse. We have another token, VCore. Uh, it'll be more of a traditional crypto token coming out later this year uh, with more metaverse features where people can have progressive governance. Um, they can have staking features, all types of um, benefits wrapped into that. And then we're launching a full scale NFT uh, marketplace on our platform so that next year we can roll into working on the interoperability. That's a lot of stuff. It is a How lot. How do you uh, figure out the marketing around all that, you know, and onboarding people into all these these new things that you want them to adopt, even if you have, I mean, you have a core audience, so that helps, obviously. Sure. Yeah, um, we talk to our users and our customers a lot. Yeah. So we do primary research with them, we can do quick surveys with them, we have beta groups with them, so we are in touch with our community every day. And so we really test with them, okay, what about this language? How does this work? Do you understand this? And sometimes they'll say, hey, I don't know about an NFT. But then when you start explaining the benefits, they're like, hey, I want that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we really dig in with them to understand their level of understanding. And then from there, we can start building our education plans and our marketing plans to drive the users and usage we want. But how many things can one, like, be on one platform, right? Without spreading yourself too thin. <laughs> Yeah, we've had to focus for yeah. sure. And, you know, we do believe that blockchain will bring the biggest benefits. So we're mm -hmm. really focused on the tokens as well as the NFTs. That's mm -hmm. our major focus for our MVU users today. And so we are honing in on those two components because you can spread yourself thin and then the user experience gets really diluted. Now, can other people work with you on your blockchain? They can. So um, we, just as an example, uh, Shoes 53045 is a uh, you know, uh, high-end shoe brand. Mm -hmm. We did um, a partnership with them where they sold NFTs off of our platform, and we were able to then bring those into our platform. And so an NFT you bought uh, on the de dematerialized NFT platform, you can wear on your avatar and in view. And, you know, it may have been red and black when you bought it, and when you bring it into the metaverse, it has flames coming out. So it really takes advantage of the platform and allows people this kind of first taste of being able to bring things they own own and personalize their avatar. Cool. What advice do you have for those coming into the space right now? And also as a female entrepreneur, I mean, you're killing it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I would say read everything you can. Yeah. And dive in. You know, don't be afraid. I, you know, I can't tell you how many wallets I have, right? Go to every user experience that you can. Mm -hmm. Try every game. Try every play to earn. Try every NFT. You know, really dig in there, and you'll see what resonates and what mm -hmm. doesn't. So just don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Be all gritty and get in there and le learn for yourself, because I think you have to do that in this space. Hey, it's Cheryl Lazar at NFTLA with Ricky from Macroverse. Hey. hey, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. So, how's NFTLA been for you? It's been, it's been fun. It's it's interesting, right? Because it's you can sort of see the humble beginnings of a brand new show. Yeah. And I think LA is always a great place to launch something and to create energy and create a new vibe. So that's been super fun. I agree. So tell us more about Macroverse. Sure. So Macroverse. It's a company started by myself. Uh, I have two co-founders, Eben Matthews and Adam Martin, and all of us come from film, television, video games, 
you know, I have a pretty deep background in in both in, in games and, and in film and television. Okay. And the idea of it is really creating a Web3 studio of the future. So what if what, what's Marvel of the mm -hmm. future? If Marvel were being started right now, and we know that they had very humble beginnings, right? And they were almost bankrupt and went through this whole thing. Now it's, you know, purchased by Disney, making billions of dollars. So how do we create new stories, mm -hmm. but then also create NFTs out of things like digital comic books. So we start with digital comic books that are NFTs, that are blockchain, okay. right? And that will, will also allow people to buy PFP avatars mm -hmm. as an entryway in to learn about storytelling, to create and, and participate in storytelling. So a lot of what we want to do is decentralize Hollywood because we've been there, we've worked, in, we've worked on really big productions with really big you know, A-list stars and directors and all that kind of thing. But as we know, Hollywood and the game industry is kind of difficult to get into. Yeah. So our way is a way to really find the next J.K. Rowling, to find the next Walking Dead, to find the next Game of Thrones, because it's, we all know it's out there. We've all heard the rejection stories that people, the, you know, some of these very acclaimed authors, acclaimed titles, mm -hmm. and they just got rejected time after time after time after time. Yeah. But yet, we have Harry Potter at Warner Brothers, we have, you know, Game of Thrones, you know, at HBO. So how do we find those types of things, but create them in such a way that royalties are tracked, there's derivative rights, you own your character, characters are actors. There's so many things that we can do in blockchain, which are just revolutionary and just completely changes the paradigm. That's that's really what we're doing. So it's a, it's a lot, but wow, fun. Wow, cool. Decentralizing Hollywood. I just, I love that theme. Yeah. I'm all about it. Are you going to be outreaching to talent and independent storytellers and artists, or do you already have these ideas and they reach out to you? Like, how is that going to work? Yeah, good question. So we already have signed up about 100 creators, some mm -hmm. from within film and television, some that are pretty high caliber, high ranking, and then also some brand new people. And, and then, of course, we're storytellers ourselves. So we've created a bunch of properties uh, as well. We have something that we've just launched called Dead Town, which starts as a PFP, and it's all about these zombies that have a very different take than you've seen in something like Walking Dead or Night of the Living Dead or anything out there. But it's really trying to build this community mm -hmm. and find those storytellers that maybe have not become storytellers yet. And then working with people like us that have done it or even, you know, we'll bring on special guests, people that are, you know, a little notorious or famous that can also help and guide yeah. some of these new people or established people. So it's really... It's licenses, it's brands, it's original content, stuff that we create and stuff that we will find. And then, of course, the community gets to, to talk about it, vote on it, have a say in it. So new artists can really come and they can come from anywhere. They can be a, an artist, they can be a writer, they can be a musician, they can be a film director, mm -hmm. it, it, or they can be working at Starbucks. Like, we don't care. If you have a good story, yeah. we want to know about it. Talent is talent. That's right. That is uh, great. I do think that this is the future, like these Web3 integrated companies, but you're starting from scratch versus adding it on, which is key. I think it's really key. I think there's a lot of these big companies, you know, whether it's uh, a Warner Brothers or a Disney, that of course they can buy their way in. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot different. I don't think you can just spend a lot of money and then everybody comes nowadays because because the decentralization key is the, is the decentralization point is key, mm -hmm. and then community is really key. So if you're just building this fake community because you have a lot of money, they're not really invested. They yeah. didn't build it with you brick by brick. The idea is that we have a community that knows that they were there and got in at a place that was an early point yeah. and are disruptors themselves, as opposed to just buying into a disruption company. Yeah, and they have equity in it in a way which has never happened before. Imagine all of us had bought into Marvel when it was like the beginning and owned a piece. You know, exactly. That, I think that's really cool. That's the idea. So what do you have to, coming up? You mentioned this one project. Yeah, so we're also working on something called Aerosol, which is it's a very cool street artist that's kind of like Blade Runner meets, you know, I don't know, Banksy, Shepard Fairey. It's got this really cool street mm -hmm. artist vibe and Akira roots. Uh, so kind of an anime feel to it. We're also working 
on something called Darklands with Evan Shapiro, who uh, is a notorious television writer. And we've also got um, so just an amazing kind of outlay of different brands and properties, a big roadmap. And the idea is we take them from PFP to collectible blockchain digital comic to game, to TV, to movie, to ancillaries, and all along the way, everybody's participating in it. And um, I think we have about, you know, we probably have about 100 different properties and then 10 to 15 on our roadmap. And I think one of the things that I've noticed in this space is mm -hmm. you get NFT millionaires overnight, but they don't necessarily know how to be an entrepreneur. They don't necessarily know how to execute on a roadmap and that's sustain it. And that's something yeah. that I think is really important. You know, I've exited businesses, I've run companies, I know how to get a product from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be one of the biggest challenges I think you'll find in this space with the coolest projects is it's very cool when they launch. It's very cool to own it and then whoosh, fall flat on their face, which is, you know, I don't think good for anybody in this industry. Totally. So we do try to talk to people and we're partnering with even established brands, there's, a, there's something called Bushidos, which they're their own NFT, but we're helping them build out their story okay. and their world yeah. and partnering with them and collaborating with them so that their roadmap gets executed on. And it's a win-win. Like we're doing some cool stuff, they're doing some cool stuff, and we're both in the space. We both have our own companies. Awesome. So the more we can do that, everybody wins. I love that. Where do you see all of this in the next year? Like, what will we be talking about at NFTLA a year from now? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, <laughs> it'll probably be a little bigger. It'll yeah. probably be not so humble. There'll probably be a little bit more money. Yeah. And I think, you know, what Macroverse will be talking about is, oh, wow, we created this kind of value. Your token mm. came out. You stacked, you let all of these people that got in, they got these cool stacked rewards. And, oh, you're... You have a couple of film deals now. How did you land those? You're working with Amazon Studios and you're working with Apple Plus and you're working with Netflix. Tell us about that. I think that's where we will be mm -hmm. next year. And I think NFT LA will probably... Or NFTs in general. And well, NFTs in general, I think, will have weeded out a lot of the, yeah. the sort of flash in the pan overnight successes and are concentrating on roadmaps that have shown that they delivered on something mm -hmm. other than a piece of art. Uh, I keep saying totally, but that's true. Like, yes, I agree on that. What advice do you have for those coming in? To the space, to the NFT space? Yeah. I think advice is surround yourself with smart people, mm -hmm. uh, people that are willing to help and to make sure that you are successful. Give more than you take. So if you're trying to learn, try to, try to give, try to be somebody that supports other projects yeah. that's out there helping somebody to build a community, to be uh, somebody that people can look up to or rely upon or depend upon. I think everybody's looking for people like that as opposed to, I want, I want as much as I can get. Mm -hmm. I, want a, I want a, as much money, I want to profit from this. Go help others profit and then I think you'll profit. And so I think that's, we're always, been those types of founders yeah. is people can come to us if they need help with their business. I, I always help people with their business and their comes back ideas. Around. It always comes back yeah. around. So it's just a, be a good person, be a good entrepreneur, be a good leader, and you'll get everything you want. Okay, so where can people find out more, possibly get involved or collaborate? Sure, yeah, it's very easy. I think we have a very cool name, macroverse.com. So just go to macroverse.com and uh, you'll see everything about our latest NFT release, which is Dead Town, which is pretty cool because it's a customizable NFT. Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, go in there and, and choose all of the parameters. And then we've got a Discord, which is just discord.gg slash macroverse. So Amazing. Go all there right. and we'll we look to see everybody there and, and be part of the community. So Thank you so much. Jump in. Thanks, Shira. Appreciate it.